Hey everyone, it's the next podcast episode where we're doing world building stuff. Today's topic is the undead construct. And um, just to be very clear, so we're all on the same page and the viewers as well as what an undead construct is. According to my own definition, a construct is anything that you take and you significantly modify it to the point where it's no longer what it was before. For example, like you take a zombie and you attach extra arms on it. It's not really a zombie anymore. It's like becomes something new. So, um, an armsy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But if you're just like upgrading a zombie or whatever, and it still looks like a zombie, then I'd say it's just an upgraded zombie and not a construct. I hope that makes sense. So, like, example, so a, a, constru a construct involves the a great change on it. So it's not just something that's better. It's it's changed to the point where it, you can't identify like you can identify it as a zombie still but it's been changed so much that you can't really say it's a zombie anymore exactly like good examples are the shambles from oblivion or a bone golem from diablo like these things don't look like skeletons despite being made of bones they've become something new mm. and uh to the point where i should say functionality of the creature changes in a way if you have a spell that animates just, you know, a zombie with two arms, I don't think it's going to be able to animate a zombie with four arms as easily. If it it's just able to animate two arms, you know, then you have just, you know, two piles of flesh uh, hanging limply from yeah. the sides. Would you have to cast a spell like three times? And it's like, reanimate, okay, the zombie's done. Now one for the arm, one for the arm. <laughs> Pretty much, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of weird that it can work in like a magical way like that, or it can be more sort of scientific, like Frankenstein. Mm. I, I like the difference between the two, though, because when it came to Frankenstein, like with Frankenstein's monster, it was more the case that he was just like a really big, handsome bloke, but the only key thing that made him monstrous was like his eyes. Yeah. Other, th other than that, he could have just kept... Like, if he didn't have that, he could have just had a normal life. But when it comes to fantasy zombies, it's... <laughs> I mean, if you look at Game of Thrones, for example, they're fucking they're sprinting all over the place. They've got like the king flesh on them. It, it's proper, proper top notch. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce you guys. So we're here with It's a Ghost UK, and uh, Seventh Outpost, isn't it? Hello. Yep. Yep. Awesome. I think the, uh, the next point to cover is like, I don't think constructs can be done in a all too realistic way. Like, there's mm. always a bit of pseudoscience involved if you're going for the scientific yeah, approach. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's take uh, Frankenstein's monster for a second. Even if you stitched a, a monster together from all those different dead people, you'd think there'd be some kind of rejection of all the different limbs and stuff, and there'd be, you know, like, a negative immune response, and the thing would just get killed. When real-life people that have had organ transplants are just un undead. Yeah, they're all undead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, like, like, like living undead. They're on, on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. On undead, you could say. Well, yeah. That depends. Um, I know certain philosophies that pretty much decide that, uh, let's say, you know, if you exchange all the parts of a lantern or a or a desktop light. Is it still your desktop light, oh, or is it some different one? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're on. The, yeah, it's like, uh, oh, I've, I've had this broom for 15 years, have you? Yeah, I've swapped out all the parts over 50 times. Wait a minute. Yeah. 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 Is it the it's... same? I, I think it's still the same. Um, I don't <laughs> think it's quite undead if it didn't quite die beforehand, you know? Yeah. I guess it depends on how we personify it. Like, would it still have the soul of the original thing, or...? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what happens with the Frankenstein's monster in that regard? It gets a whole new persona, right? Um, he basically uh, he went back to Frank, like he went, he was created, basically an infant. Frankenstein was like, "My God, it's a monster!" and <laughs> and fucked off. And then and then Frankenstein's monster was going, "What?" So then he fucked off, and then he went and explored the world a bit. Uh, he was rejected as a monster by everyone he met. So then he met a blind person who treated him well. Then the blind person's seeing relatives, I think it was, treated him as a monster. So then Frankenstein's monster did the perfect thing, uh, the, the reasonable thing of, 
I think he burns the house down. <laughs> then yeah. he went to Frankenstein and was like, yo, I want to clap some cheeks. Make me a wife. So then Frankenstein was sort of, um, how about no? <laughs> and then I think from then on to kind of force it, um, the monster threatened, like, you know, some horrible action. And Frankenstein married his adopted sister, question mark, I believe. So I think Frankenstein was going to do it, or he was doing it, but then he had the worrying thought of, wait, what if they work together? Like, what, what if she rejects him and he gets revenge anyway? What if they work together and replace humanity because, you know, they're so much bigger and stronger and they, they can be intelligent and all of that? So he decides against it. So then uh, the monster kills two people, one of them being uh, Frankenstein's wife. Then Ooh. he chases the monster up north, then with, uh, which is where the story kind of like starts, I think, um, where you've got Frankenstein telling the story to somebody. Um, and then you've got the monster at the end. He's, he's there, he's, he's there, he's like he's in the Arctic and he's just walking off, he's just walking away. Yeah, isn't he meant to be like freakishly smart as well? Like really cunning? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's been a good 12 years since I read it because we had to read it in high school. I wasn't paying all too much attention because, you know, high school work, who, who gives a shit, right? See, I wish I, I wish I had that in high school. I've got the book up here. Um, it, it is quite slow. Well, yeah. in, in, in secondary school, all we had was just of mice. We had of mice and men, and we had like one or two other things. <laughs> Yeah, I guess Frankenstein's pretty cool for school. Okay, so coming back to the concept of constructs, uh, I wonder, like, to what degree, uh, how should I say it, how is, in, in our setting, the construct animated? Do we use, like, a specific spell that animates, you know, a single zombie and it has to be you know through and through a zombie or do we use some kind of mechanic like let's say we can um, take a soul that is somehow positively inclined to us or, or enslave it somehow and use that to animate the abomination we have stitched together well the, the way I see it is it's like you've created a new, a new body right from different mm. parts but it's still one body so I think just one resurrection ritual would be fine, in my opinion. How is it? How? Yeah, um, Seventh has a good point though. Like when when it comes to actually getting it to do stuff, how is it animated? Is it a spell? Is it being few, uh, pumped full of plot juice or? Yeah. Ah, I see what you mean. Is well, it like a ritual? Is it? It's yeah. usually a combination of like mechanical things and magic, right? Hmm. Like, there's usually metal components to the construct or whatever. Yeah. Or are there? It depends. I mean, you could have... Well, I know that Ghost a while ago uh, mentioned something like filling the bones of a skeleton with metal. Mm. And I started to wonder if we're taking that, many, that much pains to produce a skeleton, then why not build a robot, you know? That um, is I the think, problem. Uh, that depends on what are we looking what kind of limits are we having in our setting there See, are settings where we're you know animating the entire carcass you know or maybe we're you know we're only able to animate one dead matter or like you know biological matter specifically um, I mean, this is necromancy, so it kind of has to be dead to some degree, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, there's nothing wrong with it being a mix, but I guess it depends on, for the overall quality, what is preferred. Like, like do we want something that's more fresh, or do we want something that's more um, rotted and long-term? Because, let's say, for example, you've got... Um, I've thought about this a few times. Like, say that you've got normal undead, yeah? And the arms have been hacked to pieces. Like, they, they can barely move. They are at that point where they are falling apart and you have no use for them other than maybe fodder and meat shields. But you still want to get more from them. Because, you know, you, you have to recycle. You can't just waste and 
So, well, if, why not just take the um, perishables and take the unwanted and just make something from them? Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, if you have a spell that animates very specifically a zombie with two legs and two arms, I don't really see a problem with stitching together a Frankenstein's monster out of different creatures, well, I mean, different humans, of course, uh, and trying to animate that, you know, replacement parts for zombies or skeletons. For skeletons, it seems, I think, uh, more readily logical for us. While for zombies, it's more like, you know, not not quite there, because you need the, you need the uh, muscles to connect, you know? Mm. I'm just wondering, what is the difference between, because I'm just running, gotten a few, I've got a few ideas in my head for a more sci-fi setting. If you was to put organs into a construct, so while the while you're creating it, you're taking, let's say, um, you're a high-end uh, necroboyo, and you've got a dragon that you've got chained up. So let's say that you're ripping out its organs and you're heeding it to grow them back. And of course, the organs are going to be bi valuable by themselves, but because dragons can breathe fire, what if you was to take the sack or take whatever it is that allows it to do that and pull it into the construct? Yeah. So, so not only do you have that as is, but you've got this. It could have a massive club for an arm, and at the very end of it, you've got fire shooting out of it. It could, it could even self ignite and just charge straight. It could be just be a, a huge morale weapon with one singular purpose, being to ignite itself, charge into the middle of an enemy army or something like that, and perish while terrifying everything around it and causing as much damage as possible. Yeah, it's, it's a bit crazy how many different combinations you can think up. It's pretty much limited only by your imagination. Mm. Which is kind of well, a problem as well. Well, that depends on whether the, I suppose, spell or the magic allows its organs to keep on working. It's a different thing entirely to animate something mechanically and, and make it, you know, flap its wings to fly. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, you know, or, or move, make it move versus make its organs actually operate. Uh, many settings generally like like uh, state that the organs of the undead don't really work. You know that their livers are gone, their intestines are gone. They can't yeah. exactly eat per se. Uh, so it's 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 dead meat, and that's and that allows them to be yeah. quite durable because yeah, they don't feel anything, and anything you do to them, it's yeah so like if you have like a specific spell that's like you know the animate dragon spell and it actually you know allows uh somehow allows the dragon to breathe fire because you know if you have an organ then the rest of the body somehow is you know attached to that organ it's, it's yeah. somehow stimulating it somehow allowing it to function in the way that allows it to breathe fire however if the ability to breathe fire or ice or whatnot is uh you know the elder scroll style you know speaking in the in the elder tongue then you have an entirely different problem if you want your undead to do it but you you won't probably need uh the specific you know yeah organs to do that that kind of brings me to a point i wanted to make and it's basically like that like Unlike zombies, where you can explain in a pretty convincing way how it works in a scientific sort of way, like, you know, with the fungus or whatever, you can't really do that with a construct. It's all kind of like pseudoscience and weird stuff like that, so it becomes really hard to explain, like, how that dragon sack would still be able to work. See, what I was thinking for a sci-fi setting, like, with, um... Because I, I was thinking of this while we are talking about the dragon and the ripping out the organs. What if, because when it comes to sort of making life in a sci-fi setting, of course you can easily like do it depending on the sci-fi setting. You know, you, you can have industrial birth, you can have it where um, creatures are, are genetically altered and made and born and whatnot. But this takes time, doesn't it? It takes time to do and it takes time to manufacture, it takes time to go through all of that. What if you were to instead have a 3D printing in just like 3d printing of organs and bodies on an industrial scale you 3d print everything separately and then you jigsaw it all together inside the body 
you basically like stick you, you seal it all up and then you use whatever to to animate it that's actually a pretty it's not cool it's idea. not alive it, it's dead the function uh, the organs function but it's not living per se yeah, you could it's, have like some yeah. kind of flesh 3d printer you just like put corpses in they get all like ground up and shit and then the weird mechanics just print the parts you need i think that's pretty awesome that sounds very interesting, but also very, let's say, science fictiony. Oh yeah, for sure. Might fantasy, you know, undead, because at that point you're like, well, why not just make metallic things? Mm. Why not just make robots? Yeah. And you be like, robots aren't gonna fail, you know. Mm. Surely, surely they're, they're gonna rust, but they won't fail anywhere near as quickly as organs and you know metal is way more durable than flesh yeah that's actually a counterpoint oh sorry yeah oh sorry i was just gonna say that's actually a point i had written down that if you know there's not really much point to have these flesh constructs and stuff if robots exist in, in your universe because robots are just better in every way really anyway sorry go on i was gonna say it could be cheaper to do it because metal yeah. is a is a finite resource like you can you can have you can have um mining operations scrapping down the entire planet sure and it's in in the you know the galaxy there's going to be so like this it's on a scale that just we cannot comprehend because of how big it is it's the it's the universe mm -hmm. it's a, it's a spiral galaxy it's that big but for like say for example for a small empire or for a uh, group or an organization or uh, whatever operating in a small portion of that it could it could be better for them it could be cheaper for them and you know how people are when it comes to cheap stuff it could be <laughs> cheaper to have to have it done this way I although think, although yeah robots are superior yeah. i think you're right in a scarcity environment um in a situation where mining is like very difficult or we're looking either only at renewable resources or something like that you know let's say that it's it's you've used up most of the, of the metal and metal is extremely expensive and the only things you can now use are just renewables or mm. you know things you can grow then suddenly you know biological matter becomes significantly cheaper in comparison to like you know robot based things and i suppose you know 3d printing things it suddenly becomes viable but I think that it would be just significantly easier to just, you know, have them multiply, feed them, and just, you know, kill some of them to, to join your army. The other thing is that, like, if you're a necromancer, right, you've already got a good yeah. skill set in necromancy. So it might not make sense to go and learn robotics to build a robot when you can just That's make, true. you know, a little flesh construct and it does the job. Maybe not as well as, like, a, a robot would, but... It, it works. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I suppose the only issue is that if you have something that's just objectively better, uh, they will just do your job better, you know? If you if you have uh, a necromancer uh, with their fleshy constructs competing versus, you know, robot armies, then inevitably they're going to get outsourced, you know? They're going to get broken. Yeah. That ties into like a kind of asymmetric warfare thing where you know yeah. like you know in starcraft right the zerg yeah. they're kind of weak in an upfront confrontation with protoss but they've got like way more mobility yeah they've got adaptability they've got numbers they've got a variety when it comes to the approaches that they can take yeah and yeah. i'm i'm way, willing way to higher. bet that uh an undead army requires less upkeep than a robot one would mm. that's certain um, something else to say with that, it's when it comes to the Zerg, they have a massive ground presence with only, uh, the, they don't have a lot when it comes to air units, they've only got about two, three of them. Yeah. Um, you got one, one, you know, one functions as your baseline air fighter, one is anti-air and you got one that is, and it's like just specializes in, uh, ground. But when it comes to the Protoss, later on, they have a very powerful air presence, a very, very powerful air presence. Yeah, it's one of the best. Mm. So when it when it comes to it, they do kind of counter each other a bit, but that is something else to take into account when it comes to the whole, uh, let's say, robots versus undead kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 
it's you, you can't you can have them dead but they are going to be on the ground because they're, they're dead unless you have um floating flying ones but when it comes to robots you can easily have drones you can have air strikes you can have orbital lasers you can have all of these things that are specifically made and designed to just counter them yeah um one thing i'd like to raise is that like a technologically inferior force can defeat a more advanced one like for example the vietnam war yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um i have so, i have read oh sorry what you say? Uh, does that for all the faxes to it you know mm. uh, like knowledge of of the battlefield etc etc yeah Plus the um, it was uh, plus in Vietnam they had really really good they were experts in guerrilla warfare with yeah. the holes on the ground and all of that. And the other thing um, is like sorry, I was just gonna say um, um yeah yeah sorry go on that um like you needn't kill the robots you can kill the robots controllers because they're gonna be mortal right. Mm. So maybe you can't kill the robots, but you can still go after the, all the people controlling them and kill them with disease and whatnot. Or like the processing centers or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so like robots are going to be limited if it comes to the environment they're set in. Because, you know, suddenly uh, frying their processors, uh, you know, could break the eye. Maybe you can hack them somehow, etc, etc. Turn off the router and they all just turn off. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. You can... They have uh, very unique weaknesses, despite being on the surface more powerful. Uh, yeah. Now I actually wanted to raise uh, some more fantasy-based uh, concepts. I've noticed that almost nobody mentions this, but like, if you need organic matter to animate something, why do we stop at people and animals? Why not? plants why not you know trees or if we're going to go all the way into constructs why couldn't we let's say put a soul into a ship well and make it, you know steer they, itself? i do i do have i do actually have that in my will to some degree as in not not the ships but as in undead elements that mm -hmm function as undead. It's like a tainted, corrupted, polluted variant of the element itself. Um, so it's like when it's and it's to be like wind, it's it to be like air, earth, uh, not f well, I have, I did have fire, but fire is more of a chemical reaction. Um, so on and so forth. Hey. But I guess, it, I guess it depends on how the magic would work and how the process for it would be, because is it more of a mind over matter thing, where your beliefs and your thought process determines the outcome or is it more of a hard scientific result thing where only certain stuff is allowed other stuff is not allowed so yeah what are things in your world because you know wind can be you know just the equalization of pressure uh, you know between between the two different uh, environments mm. uh, but you know it can be something you know the, the, the movement of air due to some kind of you know wisp or something like that some yeah yeah of... you can have you can have people that don't understand the like uh, the pressure and how wind works and all of that so to them it, it would be oh it's it's the wind we've got the spirit of the wind and <laughs> uh, by the way there is a ship undead construct in warhammer total war the the necrofix that does not surprise me yeah. yeah that does not surprise me in the slightest it's basically like a dead ship right and they've wrapped parts of it in like zombie flesh and shit and it's got like a cannon on its arm and it's basically like an undead ship with meat parts oh i know i know exactly what you're on about that big um yeah the yeah. the pirate coast one yep exactly yeah yeah it's and doesn't the... it have like tons of fish and squids dead uh dead like sea stuff on on the top of it like on the back of it somewhere? it probably does i haven't looked at the back of it really but um probably does it's it's where it's where the front of the ship is on it i think and you can see they've got like a bunch of chain uh chained flesh strapped onto it somewhere yeah i thought it was like a whole heap of like zombies just stuck in there but it could I be like it was fish. That as well but i had a close look and i watched myself with the bloody oh okay. <laughs> yeah um 
the in the Norse mythology we have the uh, Naglfar, uh, which is a boat made entirely out of the fingernails and toenails of the dead. Which what the is, fuck? sounds pretty. Cl it sounds disgusting, of course. It yeah. sounds pretty close to what we're discussing, I think. I would personally vote for some more than just the toenails, uh, but I think it's pretty close. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, let me tell you a quick story uh, from one of the games I played. This is why I suppose I prefer mechanics. So, for example, you know, uh, you can animate uh, any organic matter with a soul. That's a mechanic. Meanwhile, a spell is like, oh, you know, it animates out of one humanoid corpse, it animates one humanoid zombie, you know, it needs to have two arms, two legs, etc. Uh, that's why I prefer mechanics. A while ago, um, I was playing in this D&D uh, &D derivative game, uh, and I basically uh, had a dog uh, from... I was playing some kind of alchemist, which uh, had a, a dog... Um, that was uh, that, that I inherited from my master, and that dog died. What I, was, I, I, was, I was expecting that. I was expecting that. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking to myself, this is turning into John Wick, isn't it? <laughs> of course it is. Uh, that dog died, regretfully. Not, not of my fault. Uh, let's say I was 10 feet on the ground at the time. Uh, either way, um, I put the soul of the dog inside uh, the treehouse I lived in. And I taught it how to walk, walk you know, and, uh, you know, eventually over time as I built it up, uh, armored it, it became a vessel of war armed with cannons, <laughs> uh, with this mercenaries is... inside, etc. This is quickly turning into that one animated film where the house itself is haunted by the ghost of a dead woman and it, and it rips itself from the ground and chases after a bunch of kids. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the... I'm trying to remember what the bloody hell it was called. Yeah, it sounds... I think... I think that could work pretty well if we tried to animate, you know, the the creations of man with souls. Or did something like, you know, like, use our typical, you know, lichy phylactery powers to put ourselves into various things in order to animate them and sort of... Um, become one with them in a more uh f in a fuller manner of course necromantically animating them at once imagine something like uh like l a guild of lichy sailors or like captains that um you know place their phylacteries somewhere in the heart of the ship and they you know become one with the ship they they actually steer it uh through the waves you know, move it on on their own. Be really interesting in a world building scenario. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, do um, you guys mind if we rewind a, a slight bit back to the part about the trees and whatnot? Yep. Mm. Yep. I, I'm interested to hear what you were going to say about you know the trees, the undead tree constructs or whatever. Oh, uh, you meant me or ghost? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <about> <laughs> Well, I just wanted to hear more of your like ideas and that like you you conjured an idea in my mind like you you've got like a compost heap right and then you somehow necromance that because it's dead plants or whatever. Well, yeah, but the the compost heap is not like one thing. Meanwhile, a tree. Uh, well, that you have this uh, old alchemical actually uh, notion that everything is alive. You know, metal is alive. Um, yeah. So like you would breed gold with gold you know uh, to produce more gold in in uh, al in alchemy philosophy yeah. everything is a part of the universal soul so Precisely. yeah and i I've, I've got that philosophy in my world it's it's yeah mm. uh, so like you know if you have a tree that was alive you know you kill the tree just you yeah. know, feed, a feed, feed a chemicals whatever the tree is no more um but without <laughs> cutting it down <laughs> um and well now you have a corpse now you just you know put put a soul into it but the question is you know what kind of soul would it take to animate the tree you know would it need uh, a soul at all where are you gonna get the soul from i'm just 
I'm just thinking of people that are raking their front gardens, like uh, piling up all the leaves. <laughs> I'm just thinking of people doing that. I just think to myself, you sick bastards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm not um, so sure about the whole tree thing because it, it comes very close to, like, druidry and stuff, and I don't know. Why, why can't it be both? Like, you've got dark druidism, I've got dark druidism. It's, it's the tainting of nature and the perversion of it. And the natural cycle. I, I really like that notion. I mean, mine, mine. Um, when it comes to mine, their main philosophy is that it's, you know, like the whole thing with reincarnation and stuff like that. Their whole thing with it is that they take the concept and they reject the concept of nature. They reject the concept of um, breaking down and, and, you know, being absorbed or becoming something else and rejoining with nature and so on and so forth. They reject all of that because they want to maintain their individuality throughout all of it. So they die, and they come back, and they reincarnate as these horrible, monstrous, half-plant, half-animal, or half-human, half-whatever monstrosities. But they, and their form changes drastically, but they still maintain most of their sanity, or most of their mind in the process. It's, when it comes, when it comes to that, you can easily kind of, um, like, you know when, you, when you've got zombie plagues, yeah? Mm -hmm. What if you could do that with trees? You've, I mean, you've got Ents, and you've got Tree Ents, and you've got yeah. all these things in fantasy. Like, you've got um, nature spirits, you've got guardians of nature, you've got all these things that... It's, it's like, oh yeah, you mess with nature, and, and nature's gonna mess with you. Yeah. You've got all the trees, you're gonna yeah. uproot themselves, and they're gonna come over to your house, and they're gonna beat you silly. I why mean, why not do that? Three explores that. If I, if I if I remember right, uh, there was something like like dark treants and that sort of creatures. So I I think that um, was that from means... demon magic though? Because when it comes to art, does it, everything gets corrupted to some degree? That's probably true. Uh, but I'm I'm you know I'm I'm talking about you know using I guess artificial yeah, yeah. souls or yeah. like you know the souls of of dead people specifically to animate. Uh, things of nature. Like, oh, I don't think a but druid would, would be like, hey, let me kill a tree so I can animate it. No, no, no. The, the druid makes the tree walk and work for him. Would it even... It would it him. even... Would it even be, like, taking the soul? Because if, if we take the uh, philosophy of the universal soul, just reanimating a tree with a soul, you would be taking a piece from from that universal so like you'd be taking a, a small slice off it and using that and in but, the process um, that could become convert uh, that could become corrupted and perverted in, in its own way like but, you know you know you know when you take a slice of bread and you leave the bread out in the sun for a day and you come back and it's got green stuff on it like that yeah yeah so like corrupted slice it off you know from the rest of of yeah, creation yeah. It, it's rotting your it's... own meat force it to to obey you, but it still feels more um, dark druidy than typically like necromancy. You know, necromancy yeah. will, like you know kill it and then put something artificial in something from the outside to make it move again. But but so hold on, guys. Yeah. Isn't this like so far from constructs? It's not even funny. Like if you're reanim reanimating a treant or something, it's not a construct, is it? Somebody watching uh, this. Oh, goody! Oh, goody! A, oh, good a video about constructs, and then five <laughs> and then five minutes in, what are they on about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do, I do have a point I want to raise, but sure. oh. um, seven. Do you want to say something first? No, it's okay. Go, go. Weapons made from corpses and bones. Yeah, I like it. I had that written down. It's, it's a good way. Animate them, especially if you animate them, give them moving. Oh no, back. I've got yeah, I've got that as well. Constructs made of individual bodies that grab and pull people in. Yeah, like traps and stuff, but sort of living yeah. ones. Wow, that would be interesting. I do not want a construct made of traps. Oh my god, that would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to give in, and to get, give an idea as to like the whole thing of like uh, pulling people in, uh, Legion from Castlevania, the the series and and the game. Why are not undead? that the aesthetic like of that like, we've got all of these people like with grasping hands like trying to pull you in and that could that could be that could be that could be good yeah um another think... thing that would be really cool that no one's really done yet is stuff like 
sentient doors and undead architecture like imagine the drawbridge right that just yeah. raises and lowers when the necromancer thinks of it there is there is that in one piece but it's really really weird <laughs> um as in you've got this one fat woman uh, with a sugar <laughs> obsession and she basically she takes the souls from the people that live in her kingdom and what or queendom and she puts them in inanimate objects so you've got trees that have souls of people in so the trees are alive and animated and they've got faces and talking and whatnot you've got the flowers uh, the doors even the food is alive and, and talks and whatnot yeah i think if we somehow you know build like machinery out of you know out of um corpse spots let's say and somehow animated i mean there's plenty of um you know online um means of producing various uh computational engines out of you know skeletons like a dozen or so of them you know as in as in like biological undead yeah. machine uh, yeah 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 and i don't mean just you know just logic engines i mean like all kinds of of just machinery that can uh, process things for example i'm imagining what i'm imagining is i'm imagining somebody um in a bone in a building made of bones like take like with a shovel scooping up um uh, remains of what likely you could have like fingernails fingers body parts whatnot hairs and just throwing it into a flesh furnace Flesh yeah, and, you, and the, it has a mouth, and it's like opening and closing, and, uh, do and you it's, guys... break, it's, it's, it's got like a stomach inside, and it's breaking it down, and it's powering something else. Hmm, like a flesh oh, furnace yes, kind, of kind of thing. Of, yeah, either some kind of stomach, or just, you know, maybe it breaks the things down to build something new, you know? Or like it, it you know, it churns some kind of, um, let's say you, you program it, with a spell or something, and you know, you, you throw all kinds of just random organic matter, and based on the, I guess, instructions you gave it, it, it outputs some kind of, you know, uh, patchwork zombies, you know, out of out of trash. Organic trash, of course. There is some very kind of um, really messed up imagery that comes to mind with this. And have you guys ever seen that one and uh, listened to that one song? I think it's called Do the Evolution. Uh, it rings a bell. I don't really know what it is right now off the top of my head. Um, it's, a, it's a song and it's kind of like you've got... It, you've got like the... You've got evolution, so you've got a meteor hitting Earth, and then you've got like the dinosaurs, and then you've got... It, it goes on from there, and then it goes to the humans, and it goes from human throughout human history and everything that we've done, and then it goes into what may be with the future and whatnot. But at one point you've got industrialized birth with this great big um, metal uh, woman, by the looks of it, as in how it's designed and how it looks. And you've got babies that are being basically 3D printed, and they've got like... Um, what are they called? Uh, bar yeah, barcodes on print, um, stamped on the foreheads. You could have something like that, except with flesh, and you could have the output being undead. Make it really geigery, make it really sort of, you know... Um, you, have you ever heard of the game Agony? And I have. You've got, I've played it. You've got yeah. that, and you've got Scorn as well. The Scorn I haven't played, but Agony I've played it's, a bit. Yeah, yeah. So you've got like that kind of imagery. Scorn is similar, but it's a lot more realistic and a lot more visceral, I guess. It's a lot more Geiger like. I mean, Agony was a funny game in my opinion. I laughed when I saw them building the walls from babies and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, is that what they have? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've not like... played it. I need to get that now. <laughs> <laughs> they like they like put a baby there as like mortar and then they like jam a brick on top of it and then they put another baby there and like it's just ridiculous, but it's it's funny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Three hundred like you play. I can't afford the baby. He just gets a brick. <laughs> Who yeah. needs coat hangers when you got a brick? Instant demonetized. Oh bloody hell! Uh, um... Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, I had another few points that I think were cool. Is mm -hmm. undead construct armor that's like reactive. So like, imagine you're wearing some kind of torso, right? That's got arms and stuff stitched onto it. And each yes, arm is like yes. an independent sword arm or whatever, and like it just 
protects you and shit. I think that'd be awesome. Mm. Oh, that was, that was. I, I was thinking about it in the same uh, game where I uh, resurrected the tree. Uh, because <laughs> essentially, you know, if, if any organic matter can be made, then, you know, uh, undead power armor works, honestly. Um, you could, you know, potentially make something, you, and it would be power armor, essentially. If, it, if it's, you know, steered by your mind, essentially, you could mm. uh, train long enough with it that it would basically become power armor uh, with its own health, etc., etc. Uh, I think it's it's a pretty cool concept if you like made thick enough armor out of flesh and bone. Uh, maybe use some kind of skin or scale of some animals, and uh, you know, add bone to it, add other things, and you wouldn't need to walk it. You know, if it's self animated, you wouldn't really need to walk it. Yeah, hence why you know it could it could potentially be really um, valuable because you know you're not really animate. How should I say? It? You're adding your own strength to the strength of the armor because, like you know, if you train long enough with it, it's going to be reactive enough that it's going to you know exactly follow your movements. You know, so you get double the strength and you have. Perfect self protection. Yeah. Another thing I've got, which is kind of interesting in my opinion, is undead flying machines. And the first of these I've got is like zeppelins and blimps, because as we said in the zombies podcast, they're all they're always producing these gases, right? Yeah. So you can just like have a gigantic sort of uh, blimp or zeppelin made of like human skin or whatever stitched together for a few rotten corpses in there, let it get all really nice and gassy, and then maybe you can fly around in an undead zeppelin. There is a manga that I... I think there's also an animated thing with it. I'm trying to just make sure it's done by the right person. Um, Not. It's almost viable. A lot of the gases produced by, you know, corpses are lighter than air. Ammonia is lighter than air. I think a, a couple more are lighter than air. I'm not sure about the, you know, specific composition, but I think if you, you know, made it in a, uh, made it in a fantasy setting and explain it that way, that you know, the decomposing carcasses produce, uh, produce these gases, I think you could honestly work with it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Another thing I've got is like bird sort of constructs, like. You have like a human torso or whatever and you, you know, you make like a membrane from flesh and whatever and you sort of construct a wing and you've got like a flying sort of mutilisk type thing. Yeah. That could work. Or just leave the wings and attach them to a real person. Yeah. And uh, suddenly you have like, I don't know, some kind of flying jetpack, quote unquote, and you can do your thing from the air. Yeah. Right, I found it and I've got it. Um, have you ever heard of Junji Ito? No. He is a horror uh, manga artist. He's he's done a lot of really good stuff. One of the things he's done is is I'm gonna butch this. It's called Gyu, uh, G Y O. Okay. And it's basically you've got these machines that have been built uh, for World War Two use, and they've been discarded and they've been thrown to the bottom of the ocean. And these are basically like spider bots, and they function on gas. And what they've done is they've assimilated or attached themselves onto the fish in the ocean, and managed to kind of like um, develop and spread. So they've been taking the gases from the from the animal from animals from people from all these uh, living things and using it to power themselves. So they've got like these horrible bloated corpses and there's like a pungent horrible smell all over the place and they're using it to function. Sounds pretty cool. Let me send you both. Um... Very well. Um, just a quick return to the blimps. Yep. You know, the blimps and the like, the zeppelins have been 
uh, decommissioned pretty soon, you know, because, like, if you get all of those gases, all of them are flammable, yep. or at least most of them are fa flammable, imagine sending one, one burning arrow into that, and the whole thing goes for Hindenburg. Yeah, and also they're just very slow as well, compared to, like, a flyer. And they're a gigantic target. There's heaps of disadvantages to them. Um, Fables Fables has a good point raised with that one. It's they had they had like a, a flying aircraft, and it was basically powered by magic carpets built into the walls. It got completely shredded the moment a dragon got close enough to put flink fire at it. Yeah, it, it just got completely destroyed. Um. A point I was going to, a point I was going to raise, um, constructs attached to larger constructs, co constructs attached to larger constructs, and I have an example of this I've done myself ages ago in a story I did. Um, but first off, what do you both say to that? Sounds good. Please continue. So, so the idea was that. Um, it was a big war that was fought at one point. So you got like your Necro boys on the one side and your typical mages on the other side. And this one who survived, this one Necromancer who survived the war, went to a magical forest, because of course he did. And he'd been corrupting and spreading his influence over the native wildlife. And one of the things he did is he took a bear, um, took, a, took the soul of one of the forest protectors, uh, reanimated the bear, thrust the soul into it to power it and then he modified and attached a bunch of smaller constructs to it so the bear itself was absolutely massive it was huge and grotesque and horribly deformed and um, decayed and it was covered in these snapping writhing wolf heads and each you know each of them moving and fidgeting trying to get to the target and when it um, felt threatened or in order to protect its sides the wolf heads would detach themselves from it and each one's like got spider legs built into the head so they would detach themselves run towards the target and attack the target biting gnashing whatever they can do before they themselves die because they the, the soul is powering them and they don't have a long lifespan outside of that so without that fueling them they they eventually die um mi uh, moments or maybe a minute or two after being independent from the from the host Sounds like pretty cool, but also pretty expensive, right? Because mm. you know you've got uh, all those heads, and you can't really reuse them, I suppose. Mm. It's the main the main thing for it was uh, was that it, it was very expensive to do, but it was like one of the biggest things that it had, and it was a big contributor to spreading the necromancer's influence. So then that was eventually killed. So then the main character went on and killed the necromancer, um, and so on and so forth, and. When it went on from there, with the it mean, yeah, the main character, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it sort of makes me wonder about like putting, uh, like like animated matter, uh, to fix or replace parts in a scarcity environment. Mm. You know, let, let's say you have. Uh, you have a ship, you know, and, you know, something something partially broken. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, somehow attach to the hull the, um, the various, you know, fleshy parts, I oh, suppose. I've got and, a great you idea. Know, and use the bone as the main sort of... Uh, sort of the building material, and, like the strong yeah, yeah, support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the support. And, like, you could potentially animate it to hold itself better together you know so the yeah. flesh actually works to to hold thing th this, this whole thing together see this reminds me a lot of the thing where it's like imagine yeah. that with a ship so each part is is an individual thing by itself so what you can do is you can reattach parts or you can have it we've got multiple constructs and the way that they're designed is that they can swap parts at will so oh, you've just got to cut off its hand and you've also cut off the armor sort of another one the arm from the other one goes goes to attach onto the wrist. The hand is attaching onto the arm. It looks wonky, but it works. Yeah, uh, I had a funny idea, by the way, just to the ship thing. So, like, imagine the ship's got a hole in it, right? From, like, a cannon yeah. or whatever. 
you could like put some kind of undead sphincter onto that hole and oh then my. and then if the ship starts sinking right it can just like squirt all the water out <laughs> that would be surprisingly efficient actually. yeah that would actually be really good yeah oh god it would be it would be like um a drain in the in the bath yeah and it yeah. would squirt oh <laughs> imagine accidentally standing on it and just falling yeah, through some kind of, some yeah. kind of I mean, yeah, basically replacing various parts in a against scarcity environment with, you know, with, with just more and more uh, undead things, you know. Mm. Have an undead pump, undead, uh, you know, coal shoveling device, or just a skeleton, you know, shoveling coal, etc., uh, etc. Et so, you know, um, but I yeah. think it would be more like scarcity environment thing more than... Um, then in perfect con conditions, I think. You like, know what? Having just mechanical parts, you could probably do better. You know what a problem mm. is with all this, I think, is that it's just so broad and you can pretty much make anything. And it feels like, you know, we're discussing the universe here in a way, you know? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to tie all this together. Like, what are the limitations of these constructs? I think, you know, one limitation you could have is that the strength of a soul determines how much it can animate, you know. So we would need, like, a bigger or more powerful soul somehow to animate this. Um, the other thing is, um, what are you using to animate? Again, are you using a specific spell that animates, animates you know, specific body made out of specific body parts? Or are you using mechanics? And then, you know, you would need to somehow limit those mechanics with clauses like only organic matter can be reanimated. Only something that you, that is actually dead can be reanimated. And I guess only... decay is a great limiter as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, when it comes to, uh, what was it, only something that can die can be reanimated. Yeah. yeah. Where does that end? Because if it's, if we're looking at it philosophically, to, um, can somebody reanimate a sun, a star? I don't I mean, think so. Philosophically, the sun, you know, is a living thing that can die, but like literally, the sun is not. Uh, mm. That depends on the setting. Are you running your setting in a philosophical way, where things that are metaphorically dead, you know, can be somehow reanimated? Or are you running it in a scientific way where it needs to be actually organic? I feel like it's such a setting, if anything, most most of the time would be characters debating and arguing on the philosophy of of, <laughs> of all of this stuff it's yeah. like, instead of actually getting on with the plot. Can yeah. you reanimate a dead joke, you know? Etc. Yeah. Et uh, can because 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 dinosaurs have died and and we've turned that into plastic and they've become oil and we turn that oil into plastic. Can you reanimate a plastic bottle? Yeah, yeah. look. At some point, it gets ridiculous, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, pretty much. I guess that's why in most games the constructs are pretty much limited to be golems and um, stuff like the Necrofix Colossus. Mm. Um. Right, looking at other stuff we've got. Hives for the seas and breeding insects. What was the first one, sorry? Uh, hives. Hives for the seas and breeding insects. Ah, okay. Yeah, got it. I think it's a good idea. You so not only, not only do you have this big construct, but it is also functioning as a moving city for all of these smaller creatures living inside it. Yeah. The only downside to it is that if you've got them boring through and eating away at it, then over time it, it will naturally fall apart anyway. I mean, it'll it'll decay and it'll fall apart faster because you've got all these things eating away at it. And, and I, depending I, on how much time you spend making it, it can be... yeah. I mean, you can have like a medium that contains the insects encased in something that they won't eat through. So... Maybe you have like a like a fleshy or like a bony um, medium, you know, like a bony shell for them to to live in, and yeah. it's encased in metal or something else that they won't eat through. 
so that way it's somehow contained. Could do. So even if, like, say the construct was to be destroyed, they are, are saved, you can retrieve them. Yeah, potentially, potentially. Mm. Um... Alright, powered by souls to give special abilities. Hmm. That's, that's what I had mentioned a, a while ago, that, like, you know, putting your, your soul into, like, a ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so keen on the souls thing. I kind of prefer the pseudoscience approach. But that's just a matter of taste. Um, using necrotic magic to alter bodies and change them into something much worse. And for this, what I had in mind is, you know, in Overlord, how the main character, uh, well, to eat, in one scene, he basically, um, he's got this fresh body that he's, he's killed and mm -hmm. he raises it and it turns into a death knight, like this great big hawking and possibly large undead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine that. So basically you have the outcome or let's say you've got a preset save. So let's say that you've experimented on, and you've made a construct that is a certain way. So it could be three corpses worth, um, and it's, you know, you, 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 you've done it, and, you, and you've got it, and it's there, and you've put so much work into it, and you save that preset as, as, as your loadout, then the next time you get three corpses together, you don't even have to put that much time and effort in, you just do the spell, do, 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 um, say the word, and then, <laughs> and then um, the magic happens, biggity the boom it's done it's the exact it's it's turned into what you've originally made except with these three bodies hmm. you know what i you think, think yeah i think that weight would be a big limiter of these constructs because flesh isn't like the strongest material mm. all bone yeah and you know like an elephant right it's got a completely yeah. different kind of bone and like limb structure to like human bones and whatever like they're much isn't thicker that... It's not why, like, humans can't go beyond a certain point, because we would fall in ourselves because we can't support the weight. That, and also stuff like blood circulation, like, we don't... Yes, yeah. We're not able yeah. to circulate that blood. Not able to circulate the blood, uh, which would get you really, really cold, and the heart would be doing a lot more work as well, which means a shorter lifespan if it doesn't explode out, right? Yeah. Um, isn't also... that also scientifically why Godzilla can't exist? Because the moment it touches land, it's just gonna die. Yeah, it'll crush under its yeah. own weight. With with this being undead, though, we only have to worry about what weight it can support, don't we? We only we only have yeah. to worry about the bones. We only have to worry about what the flesh can handle. So, or how could... the weight is distributed. Yeah, yeah. So you could have like multiple legs and multiple supports yeah. for that. You could go the tank approach, which is like you know. Caterpillar treads to spread weight over a big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can make oh, a human God, yeah. skin fucking uh, human conveyor belt cat thing. Yeah. <laughs> a, cat a caterpillar made of like heads and faces and body parts yeah. and whatnot, and then it just like saunters around. Yeah. And... I yeah. think that'd be yeah. the best like, way. Like a, like a walking fortress somehow, you know, like like uh, get all of those legs and torsos, you know, sew them up or like merge them together somehow then put um like a platform on it with like mm. uh, with like you know either um either people with bows or like uh, well people skeletons of course with bows or um, a machine gun no. oh no <laughs> says like... the defenders of light the, it's, it's an undead caterpillar construct motherfucker it's coming right for us how long do we have about five days <laughs> i can see it over there in the field oh Bit slow, isn't it? Yeah, just, 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 just give it a minute or five million. You know, a Probably. problem you've got with all these constructs is mm -hmm. they're like zombies. They're going to rot away, and mm -hmm. it's a big limiting factor. You'd have to mummify parts, right? Why not just have like um, but, uh, bone ones then? Just have skeletons yeah. and just have them wear bone armor with more armor on top of that. Yeah, I think take take skeletons and make them like space marines in 40k. So you've got skeletons, and then you've got instead of the black carapace, you've just got this bone armor, and on top of that, you've got bone power armor. So it's bones within bones within bones. Yeah, I think the okay, bone but... ones are good. I think if you apply pressure to it, then like all levels are gonna break because 
you're applying pressure to all the levels at once, though. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess with a, with a really heavy, like, bone golem, you'd have to have, like, limbs made of heaps of different bones, like... Yeah. 50 femurs kind of bound together somehow just to support the weight. Mm. I think what you could do is um, just let uh, zombies be, you know, stay as they are as they rot away. Just do some basic maintenance so that they aren't dragging pieces of flesh and slowing themselves down that way. And I think would they be capable of doing that though? Because you can't expect zombies to be the most intelligent. Well, can you? What <laughs> skeleton fast and intelligent? intelligent and zombies slow and dumb it's because zombies are skeletons covered in flesh that makes them dumb <laughs> it's it's a mathematically it's the more um flesh a skeleton has covering it the more dumb it's going to be because it's it's yeah it's kind of like wearing of i guess it's kind of like having what would that count as ha ordering a skeleton to do something while it's wearing a flesh suit where everything is numbed anyway um, and expecting the result to be just as good yeah, you know, although, I don't think it would be that difficult although that is a really good point though why are zombies seen as dumb yeah. compared to skeletons I think it's a stupid trip to be honest yeah I fully agree with that because like how should I say how can you, in a situation where you can, you know, potentially have at least semi-functioning brain to some degree, you know, inside of that thing, like, why couldn't you give some of the computational power to whatever is left of the brain, you know? Yeah. Um... With it being dead, would the brain even work? Because, I mean, with, with skeletons, it's, it's empty in there, but... I, I guess I'm talking about, like, more, you know, fantasy situation. Obviously, mm. the brain most likely yeah. wouldn't work, actually. Well, about souls taking over the, the body. So, I mean, I think, um, Jeb, you talked about this before, with, uh, like, to fill out, to fill out, like, when you've got uh, undead wearing armor, and to fill out the armor, you've got, like, the souls wearing it. The souls on top wearing of... it? It's like you've got the body, like or the skeleton, and then you've got the soul that's possessing it and taking it over, and then the yeah. soul kind of like um, you have a transparent sort of. Oh, you mean like my magical muscle idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, if we had that with constructs, I think it could be cool. Like, I don't know. Like, it would certainly fix the rotting problem. Hmm. It might, it might actually fix the size problem as well, because if it's magical muscle, then it might not cave in on itself, so you could have a moat a lot bigger. There's still a limit, though. Like, you know an elephant yeah, can't definitely. jump, right? Mm. If they jump, they, they, their legs just shatter, apparently. <laughs> if they jump, their legs... <laughs> yep. Elephants don't I jump. Just... <laughs> I just love that because I'm just I'm just picturing an elephant there. It's just come on, jump. We we need to save you. Jump across, and the elephant's just looking forward, looking at freedom, looking behind it. It says, "Nah, I'm I'm just gonna sit with this one." Aren't I? <laughs> yeah, that's another weird thing about like T Rex. You know, they think he was a pretty slow runner because he had those hollow bones, right? Because he's mm. from birds, and he weighed like a, a shitload. And isn't that, isn't there isn't there that thing where if t if a T Rex falls over, it can kill itself purely from like falling over? Yep. And yeah. also, it can only do like a fast walk. Apparently, it can't actually run, according to the current science. That the last time I looked it up. Yeah. So you could actually outrun a T Rex, which is pretty insane to me. Like as long all as you're those, a fast all those runner. films about dinosaurs have have lied. Yeah, and plus they're feathered too. So the sort of reptile oh, no. looking. You know, you're reminding me of that bloody Tumblr post where you've got the T Rex <laughs> and then it's covered in. It, it, it makes it look like one of those fat, like little robin type birds. So you've got the T Rex how we normally have it, but then it's covered in feathers and everything yeah. else. So it just looks like a really giant bird, like a red, like a, a modern day bird, just but just really big. 
Yeah, they think it looked more like a cassowary in terms of its feathers, like, that kind of uh, dreadlock yeah, looking that. feathers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess we, we've come full circle. We've gone from constructs to dinosaurs and elephants. <laughs> Actually, no, that's a really good point because I think we've... This has been mentioned in the Discord um, by me before because I was just had this idea and I didn't pay a lot of attention to it until we actually got to talking about it. Would fossils be good for constructs? Hmm. Well, fossils is just like rock, right? The bone has yeah, become yeah, yeah, yeah. organic matter. Yeah, but with like the whole philosophy thing. Hmm. If philosophically, then, you know, you would essentially have next to no, I suppose, limits mm. to what is you know, used to be dead and what is actually alive. Yeah, like Or what if or what if or what if you take the DNA from the from the fossils or from the bones or from the amber or whatever and then you clone a dinosaur, you raise it up, you feed it, you look after it, you train it to kill, and then when it's dead, you reanimate it. Just I'm gonna smack my desk. What about that? I mean it'd be awesome. And then, and then you have a construct. Actually, wait, no, because of the bones. Oh wait, no, but you still have um, ther it's theropods. It, it, no, sauropods, isn't it? They're the like the brachiosaurs and shit. I think. Yeah, yeah. You still have like those those big ones. But at that point, it's not a construct, is it? It's a skeleton, just an animal one. Animal skeleton. Yeah. Just, it's you're, you're attaching stuff to it though. So oh, okay. like, I mean, take I mean, take like vam uh, vampire uh, coast. You've got them on their constructs and on these giant crabs just imagine them but on a skeleton skeleton of one of those long neck boys that would be pretty sick and then you got like a sniper at the very top in a little sniper nest yeah the zombie gunner yeah <laughs> uh, no, then, I... like you could you could even just like put, put turrets on them as well yeah i love the idea of undead yeah. uh dinosaurs and shit we need we need more of it. We need we need more of that. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's too much more to say about constructs unless you guys have something else to add. Oh, spectral constructs. What, what about them? Sorry, what? Spectral uh, constructs. Spectral. Mm. The merging of souls. You know, there's that thing from the um the Forgotten Realms, and I've forgotten the name of it. Maybe one of you guys knows, but it's like a gigantic storm of souls. Oh man, do you know, do you know what I'm talking about? That's actually um, pretty true. In the what's the game? Uh, Pillars of Eternity, the Soul of Storms. Yeah. Sorry, Soul of Storm, the Storm of Souls. I'm gonna quickly look it up. You guys keep talking, and I'll just look it up. Soul of Storms. Um. A point, a point I've got down is you've got this uh, Minecraft mod uh, called Thorncraft, yeah? And this is for examples of constructs. Um, and on Thorncraft you can make golems, which are basically one block high and one block wide. They're like the normal iron golems, just really shrunk down and you're made out of different stuff. One of the things you can do is you can combine zombie flesh to make a flesh block and use that to make one of these flesh golems. When it comes to having small ones doing day-to-day -day tasks, would you would you say that is a good idea of having uh, menial labor? Oh, sorry, I found the name of it. It's called the Dream Vestige. If anyone wants to look that up. Dream. Let me have a gander. The Dream Vestige. Yeah, Dream Vestige. Uh, it was an that entity. Doesn't sound that bad. Let's have yeah. a. Oh no, no, no! That that looks okay then. Is that kind, kind of what of... you meant? Yes and no. Except this one looks more like cancel culture personified. <laughs> yeah, like a bunch of angry people just like conforming t together to get something done because somebody said that crumpets are not a gender on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. What about making new souls in order to animate things? Ooh. Like, uh, in that um, Alchemist game I used, um, basically, you know, herbs to 
produce souls. So essentially, they were like like plant construct souls. Yeah. Alchemist was essentially based around making things out of plants, and um, I would you know use the plant souls, merge them together into something that was essentially more or less loyal to me. I would put what those... was what was what was this game? It was an RPG game. Uh, just you know, world made by a friend of mine. Oh, right, right. Like tabletop. Uh, it was running uh, basic fantasy RPG. Ah. Like, basic fantasy RPG does not allow for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was all uh, custom mechanics. I um, allow for certain um, elements of that in my own uh, in my own game. In my own game, what I do is um, you can capture all kinds of uh, spirits, yeah. like like you know specters like you can't really capture human souls but you can capture like wisps etc etc phantoms and that sort of thing and you basically have to uh beat them down into submission and show them that you're superior than them uh mm -hmm. in combat and like that you, you then bind them to your yourself uh with like a string of moonlight and um put them inside a corpse to animate things um but Sounds i think really? the of like Modifying them somehow. It's a very interesting one. Yeah. I I'm hate to be like the, the, the down or whatever, but uh, I don't like the idea of soul constructs or ghost constructs or whatever. I think it should be kept um, in the realm of physical stuff. But that's just my opinion. But soul on lives matter, Chevy Boyo. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, man. A is it kind of like, um, like, because it kind of goes into, it's not really a construct anymore, it's something else, because it's the soul, it's not physical. It's just it's too, beyond that. it's too intangible in my opinion. Mm. Ethereal construct, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Like, in my mind, they're kind of more like flesh robots, whereas, like, these are basically advanced ghosts, aren't they? I don't know. I guess it could could work. I probably wouldn't use it in my fantasy realm. Mm. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. I think it's about like, where would you put, put the borders of necromancy? Yeah. Um, where would like, shamanism I suppose, or like, some kind of um, dealing with, with spirits type of magic, you know, ethere ethereal, you know, magic start. Like, where do, where do you draw the line between class archetypes of necromancer, shaman, priest, yeah. uh, spiritualist? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like a big part of that would... Uh, I guess it would mainly be on the themes and the beliefs, because priests believe in the gods, shamans believe in the elements and the ancestors, necromancers believe in, you know, well... Themselves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's actually really wholesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> spiritualists believe in well, whatever they believe in. Uh, I think, like in in the uh, what you described earlier as like the uh, some kind of natural, greater natural, you know, spirit or whole. Yeah. By the way, the do universe you guys, is all, yeah. Do you guys have a favorite construct from a fantasy game or whatever? Ooh. That is a good question. Um, seventh, do you do you want to go first? Because I'm drawing blanks here. Um, I think the most iconic construct that I, when I think of constructs, is the abomination from Warcraft Three. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but is it my favorite? I don't. I pro probably not entirely so. I think. Um, I think the, the the rendition of the undead ship animated uh, somehow, I think that's probably something that I would be more partial to. I can't help but feel that the latest Pirates of the Caribbean, like, you know the Pirates of the Caribbean with, with the um, ghosts on dead people? Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the one with the ship that eats other ships. Oh, yeah, that's oh. pretty cool. Like, yeah. like it, like it just rears up, and the wood kind of like uh, spreads out, like a like a predator, and then it just goes nom nom nom. Yeah. Um, I think for me, when it comes to constructs, 
the one I thought of is one from um, what the hell is it called? Divinity Ego yep. Draconis. Um, I think it is. Is it uh, Beyond Divinity? Or Divin Divinity? Divinity Original Sin? Is that what you mean? No, no. It's it's the third person. It's the third person RPG one where you play as like a dragon knight. Oh, or a dragon. No, you play as a dragon slayer who then becomes a dragon knight. So then you kill your friends. And then you listen to a voice in your head, go to a dark tower, um, and then you have to choose between a couple fuck nuggets on who's going to work for you. <laughs> then I go Draconis or Dragon Knight. And there's a thing that you can do in that where you have like an, an undead kind of forge area, and it's run mm -hmm. by one guy. You can either go with with Igor, I think his name is, who's the typical yes master, yes, more bodies, <laughs> yes. Um, or you got the other guy, and I can't remember for the life of me what his bloody name is, but you can get um, the, this thing called an abomination. Oh, yeah, there you go. An abomination, and you can basically like switch parts with different stats and effects on it. So you can kind of like custom make like the torso, the arm, uh, choose between the torso, the arms, and the head, and the the legs. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, it, my favorite it, would be the Necrofix Colossus. I just love that thing. Mm -hmm. That's the Total War, Warhammer one with the cannon on its arm and all, all that. It's paid DLC as well, but it's worth it. Although it Tomb is. Kings is better. Tomb Kings is much better. Ooh. Having, having, no, 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 having a skeleton shout, where's my harem? It's one of the funniest things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grant you that. Hey, that, yeah. that brings up something else. They've got mm -hmm. sort of stone constructs that are still somehow undead, right? Uh, like they've got the Hyros I have, yeah, I know, and I really do like those. They've actually given me ideas for my own golems. I have no idea how they work. I have no idea on the law. I've maybe they. I mean, considering how they like get casket of souls that use the well of souls, I'd imagine that they do something similar to power those. Yeah. Um. So it's so it's like slave. You have built this pyramid, yay! And then death. You're going to your souls going into that thing. No. Yeah. The only one I understand is the Ushabti. You know those things? Yes. Yeah. Basically what they were is like the um, the kings. They they all were devoted to one god of that realm, right? Of that fantasy. One of yeah, those yeah. Uh, tomb king gods. And basically they had these like guards that were like mutated in the aspect of their god. They're basically like superhuman mutants and like that's why they've got like, you know, the the... the, the the head of the hawk or whatever because of Petra and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jackal and Hawk and yeah. Crocodile and yeah. So they're basically just monstrous skeletons, in my opinion, from what I can tell. Mm. Um can I say an honorable mention when it comes to the constructs, like when it comes to the favourite ones? Sure. Because there's one and it is very underrated and I feel like um if you ever get your hands on it you would love to review it. Mm-hmm. It is, I can't, I'm trying to, actually, let me see if I can find the name. But basically, it's an old DS game, and the general premise is that you're a Frankenstein uh, type of person, and mm -hmm. you basically make and design your own constructs, and you battle other people's constructs to progress the story. And there's dozens of mini games where it's like you've got to stitch up um, wounds and parts on it while keeping flies away you've got to kind of like power it with electrics with elect uh, electrics and whatnot and you've got to do this you've got to do that um let me find it monster lab ds i think it is okay yeah it's a ds game is it yes yes it is very unlikely i'll ever get to it i don't have a DS. Do they even sell DSs anymore? What is a DS? Like okay, Nintendo? a DS is basically a Game a Game Boy's older brother that was yeah. popular for the time, but then it turned to drugs and everybody forgot about it. Yeah, because because um, the guy because the guy Nintendo told told DS not to worry about came in called the Xbox, and from there DS has been not successful. Yeah, it went out in 2013, from what I can tell from the Wikipedia yeah. page. I still, I still have like a free DS. I just never use it. Yeah. Christ, um, I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunately it's very unlikely I come to that. 
Um, same with most console games. I'm pretty much a PC elitist. I just stick to my PC stuff. I'll stick to PC stuff now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you could emulate it then. You probably could. Maybe. Mm. If there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. The tricky part would probably be just getting hold of that old game. It's probably not mm. one of the most common ones. No, it'll be it's it's underrated. It's not underrated. It's it's very kind of obscure. There's there's a lot of uh, DS ones that are obscure. I mean, Chris, there's one called Lost Magic where you draw symbols and you can make custom make spells. Like you, you know, have you ever heard of Magicka? Yes, I played it. It's like it's like that, but not. It was like Magicka before Magicka. Oh yeah. And you could and you could have pets with you as as well, so you could have like tons of slimes or undead or whatnot accompanying you. Yeah. Hey guys, do you know something? We've been going mm -hmm. for almost an hour and a half now. Hey! Goes quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any closing points? Um Do you wanna go first, seventh? Sure. Um, I think that it depends on how your world functions uh, and what does it kind of limitations other put on you know what, what kind of constructs you can make but you know the fewer limitations the greater um, creativity you can have with this yep sounds good to me should I go next, or do you want to go? Um, I'll go. I'll go last. Okay. Well, basically, my point, my summarization of all the points we've heard tonight on constructs is, I think they're really interesting, and there's a lot of unexplored sort of tasks like the sentient door, the undead drawbridge, uh, the undead weaponry and reactive armor, mm. that type of thing. But I think it's very easy to just go too crazy with it and have like these insane overpowered constructs and whatever so I think you have to rein it in a bit and like think about real limitations like you know the elephant and the t-rex there's like a limit to how much weight they can support and maybe use these things to to rein everything in and make it a bit more sort of realistic as far as you know necromancy can be realistic because if you don't rein it in I think it just ends up in a kind of sort of ridiculous state that's just a bit a bit overpowered and a bit silly but I do really love constructs so I think it's a great thing and I prefer the pseudo-scientific stuff to the sort of soul magic stuff but yeah that's what I'd say um, what I was gonna say is I guess when it comes to it because of the time investment and the resources required and the materials required and all of that it can't be made willy-nilly. They can't really... There is obviously room for experimentation, but there is a limit on how much experimentation, because like, you have boundless creativity, but if you don't have the resources to do that creativity justice, then it can cause problems. So I can't help but think that if they would be used in stories and settings and whatnot, that people would specifically get them for certain purposes. That ensures that it is a worthy investment of the time and the resources spent on them and this could be anything from breaking some uh, a front line of an enemy army to breaking down some walls it could be carrying stuff it could be even getting other corpses it could it could be like with abominations from wow in which case it's they have like an aura of poison or disease around them and they can pull people in and so on and so forth yeah they're kind of like a mega zombie yeah could even be just haphazardly slapped together because why not and just see what happens yeah i think that would probably be the better way with the flesh constructs at least because they're not going to last mm. just just a few stitches here and there job done Move yeah on to the next one exactly before it rots away in a few days yeah all right guys uh, anything else no no um I'm heeding, I'm resisting the call of nature at the minute, so, <laughs> okay. um, um, uh, yeah. Alright, thank you very much for taking part in this podcast, there's been a lot of interesting things put forward. I think Lovely that, to be here. yeah, I think yep. world builders will definitely get something from this. Hmm. 
Thank you, Chip, for having us. You're welcome. Thank you very much, mate. I'll see you guys for the next one. See you for the next one. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you got something out of that. I know it was a bit rambly at points and it kind of got off, to off topic a bit, but that's just the nature of constructs. It's such a wide, it's not a narrow thing at all. It's, it's really a wide um, field. There's just so much potential with it. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you see, I hope to see you for the next one. Bye everyone.